guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about, are you ready to take the medical coding certification exam? How to know. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so whether you are taking one of the four main medical coding certification exams, the CCS, the gold standard of medical coding credentials, the certified coding specialist, the CCA, the certified coding associate, the CCSP, the certified coding specialist physician based, or the CPC, um, the Certified Professional Coder, any one of these, how do you know that you are ready? Well, it depends on you and it depends on how often you are studying um, to really be able to gauge your uh, exam readiness, okay? So these exams are all tough. There is not one exam that is easier than the other, but the toughest exam is the CCS because the CCS says that you have mastered both inpatient and outpatient coding. So you must be proficient in uh, ICD-10-CM, of course, that's the diagnosis coding, CPT, that's the procedure coding, and ICD-10-PCS, the inpatient procedures, which is completely different <laughs> from CPT. So with that said, um, you really have to look at the particular exam that you are taking. How often have you been studying? I harp on my channel a lot about having to study 20 hours per week minimum. There is no negotiation on this. Blue, I have a full-time job, I have kids, I have a farm and all these things. A lot of people have those things and they still manage to make time. So if you are not putting in 20 hours per week, that may be part of your problem because um, both of the exams, both association exams, the AHIMA exams, it is roughly two minutes per question. AAPC is two minutes, 40 seconds per question, right, on their CPC exam. So you may be thinking two minutes, that's not a lot of time. Two minutes, 40 seconds is not a lot of time, but it's more than the AHIMA exams. Guys, this is why I say I talk a lot about reading the coding guidelines once per week. Um, not only will it help you to become a faster reader, it will help you to have those guidelines in your mind. So that way, when you are in that exam room, these are open book tests, guys. So if you know your books and you're very familiar with them, it's going to make getting through much easier. There are um, exam prep guides out there. I do not recommend the medical coding certification exam prep guides from AHIMA uh, because of the way that the, the tests are and people get so mad because they say, well, none of those questions on the practice uh, book were on the test. They're not supposed to be. Because if they were, then everybody <laughs> could just purchase the book and memorize those answers and there would be no way to gauge um, knowledge base and things like that. So there's plenty of other uh, brands out there that have their um, exam prep guides. Uh, Medical Coding Pro is the one that I have used uh, for the CCSP. It's a great book. Um, it's got really great scenarios in it. Um, the uh, CC, CPC uh, study guide is a great exam prep guide, uh, e even if you're taking the AHIMA exams, the CCS, CCA, or the CCSP, you could still use a CPC study guide to prepare um, for exam readiness because we all use the same CPT manual. So it's just because um, another association made that particular book does not mean that it will not prepare you. Guys, the thing about being prepared for these exams is making sure that you've been practicing enough so that you're not overwhelmed when you get into these um, testing rooms and you see these scenarios, right? You are going to know by looking at these scenarios, okay, this is your first thing on how to know if you're ready or not. If you can look at an op note and immediately be able to start picking out the diagnoses and the procedure and what's going on because you're not gonna be able to just look at the title of the procedure and automatically code from that. You have to be able to read the note and be able to see, does this match what the title of this procedure is? Because sometimes, you know, things aren't the same as <laughs> the way they are in the title of the procedure. As they are in that operating room, you know, you never know what could be on these tests. They could change it from you know, a, a closed procedure to an open procedure. So that's one thing that you gotta really look out on. So if you have been reading consistently, if you've been studying consistently for 20 hours per week, if you are within three months of completing your program, I have said this many times, when it comes to completing these programs, people ask me, how soon should I sit for the exam? 
It really depends on if you feel ready or not. But don't depend on these uh, exam prep guides to be like, okay, I passed this so I can, you know, easily pass <laughs> my test. Are you able to get through the scenarios quickly? Are you reading fast enough? Are you going with your first gut instinct? That's a big thing too, because a lot of people who fail these exams come back and tell me I failed because I got hung up on one scenario. If you do that, guys, you are allowed to miss some questions. And this is on AHIMA or AAPC. You do not have to get 100% of those questions correct in order to pass the exam. You just have to get the majority of them correct. So you want to make sure that if it's one that you are absolutely not sure on, or if it's a particular specialty you're not really comfortable with coding, look at your options, right? And then go from there and then just choose the best answer and then move on. It's no sense in getting hung up on one question because that one question is not going to, going to make or break your test, okay? Keep that in mind, all right, guys? But it's about getting through these uh, questions quickly, like I said, and making sure that you are being proficient with the use of these books. That's where a lot of people get hung up. They get where they, they want to look at these practice tests and work with practices, work with practices, work with practice tests, but then they don't get comfortable with their books. So you're, meanwhile, you're comfortable with these practice tests, but when you get into the exam room, you start feeling overwhelmed because there's all these books and you don't know which one and, and which one do I look through? That's why I tell you guys, you have to practice with the books in order to be very comfortable with them. I have mentioned a lot of times on my videos that I do not believe in writing, tabbing, or highlighting. Yes, AAPC does allow for that. AHIMA is very strict. And if you look at the candidate hand guide, I don't want to hear any um, back talk on this one. In the candidate hand guide on the AHIMA website, it says that you cannot use homemade tabs with these books when you go into these exam uh, exam rooms. They have to have been the tabs that came with the original book, but you cannot make your own. And the only one that I know of that comes with its own tabs is that uh, CPT manual from the AMA that we all have to have. So it's okay if you have them on there. However, if you are depending on, you know, using those tabs to be able to get to the book, you're going to tear your book while you're practicing. You're not going to be able to tape that book up because tape in the book is not allowed. Okay. So that's why I'm saying get comfortable with your books. You work with clean books. So that way you don't have all these notes because the notes will not help you during the test. You have no time to look at notes while you're taking the test. So that's why I'm saying readiness all depends on you. How often are you studying? Make it those 20 hours per week. Um, are you going through those practice uh, practices in the books that I recommended? The ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS coding handbook with the answers. Yes, if you are taking an exam that does not include ICD-10-PCS on it, you can still use that ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS coding handbook with the answers to help you practice because there are plenty of scenarios in there that are just focused on diagnosis coding. So use that to help you to learn diagnosis coding. And for that CPT side, there is no book better, in my opinion, as a book lover <laughs> and as a person who's taken three and successfully passed them all with AHIMA, three exams, I recommend the AAPC CPC study guide. Yes because they have wonderful scenarios in them. I'm not paid by AAPC. I'm not a member of AAPC. Uh, so this is just me giving this advice on my own free will. Okay, this is not an ad for them, but that book is fantastic for people who are wanting to practice. And it has everything rolled into one. It's got stuff about anatomy, medical terminology, um, and as well as like just things that you need to go over. So it is a very good, good book <laughs> uh, for studying that CPT side. Now, as far as like the regulatory side goes, a lot of people ask me about that. Well, what are some references for that? This is where my people, y'all need to learn to fish. And I'm telling y'all now, I have posted those links several times for the coding guidelines, for HIPAA, for all these things, OIG and stuff, and people still ask me for them. So what I'm gonna tell you now is this, go to Google and you Google 
those resources so that way you can find them. And the more that you invest in you finding these things, you finding these resources, the more it's going to stick rather than me having to spoon feed and tell people, this is where you got to go. This is what you got to do. I've done that so many times and I still get those questions. So that's what I'm saying, guys. I'm going to be a little bit more stern with you guys as far as like, you got to look for these resources. And there's, it's so easy to Google this stuff. And when you ask Google for whatever it is that you don't understand, whether it is present on admission or whether it is a uh, HIPAA or OIG or uh, reimbursement issues or anything like that, all you have to do is go to Google and you'll see a ton of references and resources pop up. And as I've said before, um, CMS is a great website to go to that has a lot of uh, frequently asked questions about different topics. I share that link <laughs> a lot on my um, on my Patreon channel. Patreon, if you don't know, is a lot like YouTube, uh, except for you're paying to support the creator, which would be me. And it is $10 per month. You get access to all of the quizzes and um, things that I post there, the, the reference tools that I post as well. And of course, you get videos about me, <laughs> uh, stuff I don't share here on YouTube. Um, but the link for my Patreon is in the description box below. And guys, it's all about paying attention to the things that are out there. I can't tell you how many times people have said, well, where can I find this and where can I find that? And, and where can I get this? Where can I get that? And the whole time I've said it's in the description box. And so that's the thing. If you're doing that, that tells me you're not ready for the test because you're not paying attention to detail. And those exams are all about detail. Okay. So, uh, Get, uh, pick up those books like I've recommended uh, because those are the two that I use to help me prepare for the CCS and the CCSP. I took the CCSP first and then I took the CCS and the ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS Coding Handbook with the Answers by Nelly Leon Chisholm was the one that I used to help prepare me for that side. And then of course this, the CPC Study Guide helped me to, to brush up on the specialties that I don't normally code for. Uh, when I work with CPT. So, cause I work in the outpatient side. <laughs> so I work with CPT a lot, but I don't always code for particular specialties like cardio and, you know, urology and that kind of thing. So um, that study guide did help me. So that's what I would recommend. And then going through your books, if you have the Optum books, which Optum is uh, approved through AHIMA for use on their exams. But you got to keep in mind that it's a spiral bound book. If you're looking for the ICD-10 PCS book, it has to be the spiral bound book, not the flat edge book. And in the back in Appendix M, they have a whole list of all these uh, um, ICD-10 PCS procedures. It is very important to go through that whole list and code out everything. And once you've done that, then you'll be more confident and you'll be ready. Okay, that's one of the ways that you know you could be ready. Um, because the more you go through those practices, the faster you'll get with looking up stuff. And the more you can word associate different procedures and things, so that way you can be even more prepared. But once you've finished your program, you should be sitting for your exam no later than those 90 days. If you wanna take your exam right away, once you finish your program, because you've been studying the whole time and you're ready, that's fantastic, guys. Go ahead and do that. You do whatever it is that you're ready to do. But don't rush if you went through a fast-paced medical coding program. Somebody told me that they are signing up for a 200-hour uh, medical billing and coding program. 200 hours. That's five weeks if you did 40 hours per week. Five weeks to learn medical billing and coding. It is so egregious that there's schools out there that are like that. They're just trying to shove things down your throat so that you can um, hurry up and call yourself a medical coder. Uh, uh, going through a program like that does not a medical coder make, guys. It doesn't, okay? So that's why you have to make sure that you're studying. If you're in a, in a really short pace, pro short, uh, pace program like that, you wanna make sure that you are going through the independent study video that I have on my channel. Again, that link is in the description box below that lists all the things that you should learn and the amount of time that you should go over each uh, subject. I recommend nine months, 12 months, or 18 months to be able to fully understand everything and then go sit for the exam because people who try to rush at six months or less 
are more likely to fail these exams. And even if they do pass uh, by some miracle, they, they pass, even though they, they may barely pass, it's it's still not going to prepare you for the real world when you have to be tested again and again by these employers, guys. That's what they do. They have to be able to gauge your knowledge. So even though you have a credential, if you don't know the fundamentals of coding, that's going to make it even more difficult for you. So that's why I say um, make sure that you go through a, a, a good PACE program that's at least 9 months, 12 months, or 18 months. If your program is less than that, then you fill out the rest of that time to make it 9 months, 12 months, or 18 months. And then once you get done with that, then in 90 days, you should be sitting for your exam. You should be consistently preparing 20 hours per week so that way you can, when you get to your test date, you can walk in there with confidence and be prepared. Because the books will help you. You just have to learn to use the books. If you go through Optum, if you get the Optum um, ICD-10-CM book, ICD-10-PCS book, um, in the ICD-10-CM book, the diagnosis book, there are scenarios before every single chapter. And it has the answers and the rationale. And again, the, it has the scenarios. But you go through and you cover up the answers and you practice with those. Because again, the more practice that you get with the book, the faster you will be, the better off you'll be in that exam room. Because again, two minutes per question or two minutes, 40 seconds per question. That is that is the whole point. You have to be fast. There's no um, boot camp that you can take that will help prepare you. There's no uh, amount of money. There's no particular uh, program that you can go through that will make you fast. The only one who can make you fast is you. And it's like exercise. You know, people who are professional runners know this, right? They don't start off with a with a, a really fast mile, you know, like six minutes, five minutes. They don't start with that. They build themselves up to that level. Okay, so it takes time. And just like it takes time with that, it's going to take you time with learning medical coding. So as long as you are, are ready and you've gone over all these things, You've touched on every single one of the domains of your exam and the domains can be found on the websites um, that have them listed. AHIMA has all of theirs listed right there. It tells you what, um, what domains are for every single exam and then what it is and what you're expected to know. And the same thing with the CPC, it breaks it down as well on their, on their website. So take the time to look at those so that way you know what to study. Please don't ask me because I won't respond, guys, because I'm just saying it just now is that the, you have to look there on the website so that way you, that you'll know. But the more that you practice and the more confident that you feel, you are going to know that you're ready um, at that time. But if you set a date, which is very important when you are studying, if you don't set a date to um, say, OK, I want to take my exam on October 3rd. If you don't say a particular date, then you're, you're likely to go past that and you're likely to not even test. You say, oh, I need a few more days or I need um, a little bit more time, a little, a little bit more time rather than just getting in there. That's my goal date. That's where I want to go. And that's where I'm going to take my test. So just make sure that you guys think about that when you are out there and you are preparing yourself for these exams. Um, stay out of those Facebook medical coding groups so that you can think that you can prepare with other people. You won't. This is a you think. This is a you uh, issue. This is a you <laughs> uh, situation that you are going to be the only one to get yourself through this. So make sure that you keep that in mind. Okay, guys, keep your heads down. Make sure that you're studying like you're supposed to do those 20 hours per week. Uh, I've talked about that several times. You can look at that video on my channel. Um, about how I break it down so that way it's easier and that way you can make it possible, make it a goal for yourself. And then that way you know, okay, I have a target date in mind and when I get to this target date, that's when I'm going to take my test and I know that I'm going to put my foot down and I can't go past this date. So then that will get you to, okay, make sure that you're consistently studying so when you get to that date, you'll be ready, all right? Again, there's no other way to do it but other than gaining that discipline. And it's that discipline is so very important, guys. It is so very important. So, 
That's just my advice anyway. But best of luck to you out there, guys. Make sure that you are taking the time to study. And don't be throwing your way, throwing away all your money on these boot camps or these little seminars to help prep you and things like that, guys. Nobody can prepare you but you, all right? So make sure that you're practicing, 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 practicing. That's all you can do. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.